Hi, I'm Stuart Biggins from electricmotorscooters.com.au and I'm here interviewing Carlos, who is at the bleeding edge of technology in electric motor scooters in Australia and possibly the world. Uh, if you're looking at budget commuting in Australia, you would be crazy not to, not to consider this as an option to a petrol driven bike because you have no emissions, no fuel and possibly the cheapest maintenance schedule on the planet with regards to, to motorcycling. So Carlos, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you Stuart. Yeah, Carlos, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this. this is, it'll be very interesting for everybody to find out a little bit just about you and, uh, and what Carlos is all about and what, how are you qualified to, to sell these bikes? Well, first of all, I've always been a bit of a greenie one and uh, I actually study uh, electrical engineering just uh, for the purpose of um, helping speeding up the process of um, launching this type of an energy in Australia, really. This is relatively new technology. Um, how do we know we can trust it? Even though we say new technology, this thing has been around for many, many years and we've got an example just behind us. There's a crown lift and it's electric and it's been around for decades. To me, this should have been on the market 20, 30 years ago. Oh, probably even earlier. I mean, I, I brought up the argument the other day when someone was asking me about uh, you know, the new technology and how it's going to be really difficult for it to take. Well, it didn't take long for, you know, for the Germans and everybody to take on to diesel electric power during the war. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were here, OK, we're going to do some silent running now. You know, and they dive and uh, they turn off their diesel motors and they'd be running on battery power. So it's, it's been around since, I think, I think since World War I. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, really the only difference to today is that uh, we're using a different components on the battery, which allows the battery to store more energy than the past uh, batteries. Yeah, so uh, tell us about these lithium ion phosphate batteries. Okay, uh, a normal uh, car battery, an acid battery, would, uh, will allow to be recharged maybe 360 times. Yeah. So virtually after using it after one year, you need to purchase a new battery. So how this one compares to the acid battery and iron battery and silicon battery, this actually allows to be recharged 50,000 times. Wow. So the more the lithium gets recharged, the more it loves it. Okay, so it doesn't develop a memory per se, like a typical acid or gel battery. You know, if you only charge it half, halfway, you know, 10, 15 times, all of a sudden you, you're only on three bars rather than five. It doesn't, it won't no, do that. It actually works better if you recharge it every time you use it. Even if you only use a quarter of the battery, you can still top that up. The battery, it loves being recharged. The more you recharge it, the more it loves it. Can these batteries be charged as you ride? Well, um, that's a good point, Stuart, because um, even though we call it electric, there's four different types of energy inside this vehicle. And we call it uh, electric, magnetic, kinetic, and regenerative. The regenerative is just like the old push bikes where they had a dynamo attached to the front wheel and recharges the battery as the bike moves. The kinetic energy is the energy that you apply on the brakes to stop the vehicle from running that gets recovered back to the battery. Every time you stop at the lights or the bike's not moving, it's not consuming battery. It's only when the bike moves, it's using the battery. Also, oh, if you're going downhill, oh, it effectively down, downhill, is recharging it's, the battery. It's uh, actually recharging the battery. Now, what happens if you, if you forget to charge it and it conks out? and I'm 10 kilometers away, what, what's, what happens? What do you do when it, when it conks out? You know, that, now that you brought that up, um, if you run out of battery, all you have to do is switch off the key, wait a couple of seconds, turn the key back on, and it goes into what we call reserve mode. Reserve mode on a battery. So hang on, let's get this right. You run out of power, thing doesn't go, the you, thing doesn't go. You turn the ignition off, and you the, basically reset it. Resets going by the reserve mode, which means on a software, on a reserve mode, only allows you to do maybe half of the speed that you normally ride on. But 
will still take you home, won't leave you on the street. On a reserve mode, we'll probably get to ride 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour, not 100. So how many kilometers is that? Is that like, maybe you'll get 10, 15 kilometers out of reserve mode? Well, from my experience, I've done seven kilometers when that happened to me, but right. I assume they'll do 10, 15 on the reserve mode. Because on my normal petrol bike, I get 10 kilometers and that's the end. Well, the, of that. I'd say it would be very similar. So that's a really good, that's a really good reserve yeah, mode to have. That surprised me, that did work. So, and charge the battery, remember. We've mentioned the kinetic and the regenerative and the electric, but we haven't talked about the magnetic energy. Oh, yeah. And the motor of the bike itself is on a back wheel. And the motor, it's a magnetic motor that um, the electricity produces a chemical reac reaction on a battery and uh, produces the energy that will make the magnetic motor run. So the motor itself is on a back wheel and um, it's just a quiet and silent thing that doesn't make any noise. Now I've heard people claim that there will be an influx of employees down at the Hazelwood coal-fired power station when all your bikes become popular the popular and the flavor of the day that they're just going to be shoveling in coal to power up these things do you have any explanation well, as to how we're going to stop this well it, to me it's just impossible that uh, <laughs> an electrical bike will uh, going to produce a lot more uh, gas emissions than a petrol vehicle that's like impossible yeah so it's, it's relative to use i mean it's it, to me, it doesn't make any sense that that somebody poses the question, oh, we're only going to be using more resources to power these e-bikes when there's going to be less fuel available to, to the market in the future. I mean, all the car companies are already talking about phasing out all their petrol-driven cars by 2025. I think there's only a few American manufacturers that are going to keep producing it beyond that, only because they're, they're going to be producing their own fuel, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense that you're going to use more coal and more resources to power uh, an e-bike when we are going to sustainable energy anyway, wind, solar, um, hydrogen. Well, I can tell you one thing, Stuart. The best thing about these bikes, they're environmentally friendly. Mm. There's no carbon emissions to polluting the air that we breathe and just for that purpose to me it's the best thing available in the market yeah. so if we can um, commute travel to university on a electric vehicle you'll just be a great contributor for cleaning for speeding up the cleaning of the environment and the air that we breathe mm. so to me that's the thing that I'm most proud of, is um, that the bikes themselves are environmentally friendly. Now, the cost of e-bikes. Um, I was doing some research online the other day and I'm looking for my dream bike. And I found my dream bike. And uh, it's this 200 horsepower electric beast that would do naught to 100 mile an hour in about three seconds. Wow. $38,000. Wow. But the equivalent Ducati is wow. triple that by the way. The cost of e-bikes compared to like say a Vespa, what, uh, what, kind of, what kind of money are we looking at for like, a, like an entry level compared to a Vespa? Like a 150 Vespa, I, I don't know what a Vespa's worth. Okay, I can tell you for sure that air bikes compared to a Vespa will be a lot less than half price. And the bike itself almost pays itself on petrol savings. So what, what kind of savings are we looking at over here? Like say for a courier, a guy who, uh, you know, does you know, three or four hundred kilometres a week in the city. I mean, what kind of savings are we looking at? Is that enough savings to actually pay for an electric bike? Well, it works out to be. Um, the savings on, petri on petrol actually pay the bike itself. Well, wow, so that's three, four years. Well, yeah, because I spend about just on petrol savings. I, I can spend like forty, forty-five dollars easy and on my motorbike just cruising around town. 
Yeah, and for a Korea guy working all day on a bike, you don't yeah. have to put up with the smell and the noise. Yeah. And it's a lot faster than a petrol bike in the city, this electric bike. It's so user friendly. And um, for a person working on a bike all day, this will improve their lives a lot. Now, one question a lot of people ask me is, the bike is silent. Does that cause an issue? Will that be causing issues in the future? Well, personally, I don't think so. I actually enjoy, uh, the reason I enjoy riding is for the satisfaction that uh, it doesn't make any noise. So um, to me, it just makes it a lot more user friendly by not being noisy. Can you noisy it up if you wanted to? Well, can I have like a USB port with a couple of speakers with the latest Ducati V4 going <laughs> or me just going down the road going ning 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 ding 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 like all the sound whatever you can I'm yell saying. and scream so if somebody's walking across the road with their you know if they're walking across the red light that they're not supposed to be walking across with their iPad or their their iPhone in their ears listening to whatever music they'll still be able to hear the horn that you're going to toot if you're on a normal scooter or in a normal car anyway or you can yell at them. I mean, well, you have these options, but you can, you can like put a fan. There is a fan, isn't there, yeah, on one of the bikes? Uh, because there was a, a concern for some people being so noiseless that uh, we actually got the factory to install a little fan just to produce a small noise so people can hear it, the bike approaching and uh, be aware of it. To me, um, with no noise, it's the best solution because you know there's noise pollution and yeah. there's uh, emissions pollution, and uh, a lot of people likes the the sound of the petrol bike, but there's a lot more people that doesn't like the noise whatsoever because it's annoying. Okay, so that USB port that's in the bike, I can just plug that into a little Bluetooth speaker and have like Harley Heaven coming out of that. Or you can listen to music. Or I can listen. Well, you, yeah, you can have music going on, some calming, soothing music, or some guy bleating out, you know, come and get your pizzas from Domino's Pizza. Oh, it's not a plug for Domino's Pizza, by the way. But yeah, you can you can almost have advertising as long as it doesn't breach the uh, the noise rules, which is 55. Is it 55 decibels? 85 decibels. 85 decibels. So you can be really blaring out your business's commercials out of the back of the box, almost. Yeah, and the, yeah, the use of the USB port, you can um, put install whatever sound you want it to install, and they can actually recharge your telephone if you want to, and okay. you can plug in your laptop and uh, get the use of it. Now, what kind of range are we talking about? Like, say with the courier bike with the box on the back mm -hmm. of it, what kind of range are we looking at? Because obviously you can dive into the software, uh, the ECU of the bike, and adjust it for performance or for economy. So in a typical, I, know, I guess, a economy adjustment, you know, for, for a business, where you know, maximum speed might be, say, 60 kilometers an hour, like within the city. What kind of range are we talking about? Like okay, with a, um, now there's, just to clarify, there's a nine kilowatt and a six kilowatt model, isn't there? The food delivery or the Korea delivery bikes, they're actually six kilowatts. Six and kilowatts. Yeah. So the range itself depends on how many kilowatts, how many batteries you've got installed. Right. All of the batteries are actually removable. If you are working with the bike all day, you can actually have a spare battery okay. and uh, remove the one that uh, you've already used and right. install a new one which will double the range but usually depending on the voltage and the weight of the person and how fast you ride will give you the range so if you weigh not too much not too much what's that 100 kilos no um, like if me you, if you weigh less than 100 kilos and you travel uh, 40, 50 kilometers per hour, obviously you're gonna get a lot more range out of the battery as opposed to a person that weighs 150 kilos yeah. and rides 110 kilometers per hour. So an average guy's weighing 75 kilos, 
what kind of range are we talking out of one battery charge? 100 k's? No, uh, the, actually the Korea one will, um, will give you about 200 kilometer range. A 200 kilometer range on yeah. one charge? Yeah, on one charge. Wow. So I ride mine to work almost every day and mine is also a 6 kilowatt. And um, home, work. Oh, let's just get this right. Just... <laughs> that thing that I rode the other day, that, that Korea bike. Yeah. 200 kilometer range. Yeah. Not go. a like a 110 no, kilometer range like my scooter. That's this one here next to me. That's yeah, 200. Yeah, because um, that's like, a missile. I I rode this thing. It's no, a missile. That's really fast. That bike, really, really fast. It gets up to 120 kilometers an hour. Like, not that I did that on the freeway or the highway, by the way. <laughs> no, it's true. I did, uh, I did, but it was incredible. Now even my one, I uh, ride it to work, uh, home to work, and work home, and uh, I only charge it every second day, maybe three times a week. Now these, all of these bikes come with GPS tracking devices as That's well. That's correct. Um, all of our bikes got a GPS tracking. All you need to do is uh, get yourself a SIM card. Yeah. And um, log onto their network, just like any it. other one. Yeah. yeah. So that's just another bonus and advantage of having one of our bikes because it's already in there. It's already in there, and if you leave your bike uh, at the front of the shop and someone moves it from one place to another, it sends you an alarm to your telephone saying that your bike is no longer at such and such location, it's right. now at this new location. Okay, so it tracks, so if you've got a business, it tracks your vehicles. Yeah. But does it, uh, is it part of the, like, the alarm system? Does it, can it immobilise the bike as well? Is it set up for that too, or...? It, it's not set up as an immobiliser. Yeah. Uh, I, I know it can be done, but that's another requirement to right. be added on to the um, GPS tracking. Okay. Um, but one thing that we haven't talked about, and uh, that's one thing that uh, not many bikes do and they always do. Makes the bed. No. Does the dishes. No. No? What? It's got a reverse mode. It's got reverse. It's got reverse. Well, so, not bad for this one, you don't really need to use yeah, it, but, but for a bike like this one, oh, it, that one, it weighs 200 kilos, yeah. having the option of having a reverse button, it just assists you with your parking uh, and uh, with no effortlessly, wow. with no effort. Reverse. So the, we've got the, the reverse gear, the USB port, the GPS tracking, Reserve mode. Reserve mode. Oh, I can't get over that reserve mode. And, that uh, is such a the great idea. Best battery technology up to date. These lithium batteries they allow to be recharged fifty thousand times, opposed to three hundred and sixty times for a normal battery. So when you purchase the bike, as well as minimal service, yeah. the battery goes for life. So service, a typical service. That, I mean, I've got motorbikes. Typical service would be brake pads, rotors. Yeah, we've got a checklist to go through all the nuts and bolts. Yeah. Uh, virtually change the brakes, a bit of lubrication, and uh, adjust uh, the bike to the software computer levels. Right. How often do they need calibration? I guess it. Oh, we just plug it into the software to uh, uh, read the diagnosis, just to see if the bike um, has been performing and uh, oh, being so it used records data. So it actually yeah. records data it records everything that as the it goes. Does with the bike. So if something a little weird is been going on with the motor, it'll it'll show up. Or even if it's been mistreated, whatever, it, everything will show Which up on the diagnosis of the I software. Would, yeah, there'd be lots of. Yeah. The motor itself is on a back wheel, and if you uh, ever something ever happens, all you have to do is just. Uh, Change the back wheel, then you change the motor. And How long does it take to change the back wheel? So if somebody comes in, if I come in, the motor, there's something going on with the motor. Just the same as uh, you would take to change a, a, wheel. a flat wheel on a car. Same thing. Like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, not even that. Wow. All our bikes come with a one year warranty on a motor. Yep. And five years warranty on a battery itself. Five years. Five years. Wow. So um, all of the service get to be done in house. Yeah. And uh, we do check all uh, how the motor is going, how it's performing, how the battery levels, and all of that to come on a diagnosis through the software. So it's actually good to have the, the bike done in house, uh, the serviced in house, because uh, we give a cap price servicing 
for life on a bike and this way you, um, you can monitor and have your bike up to standard almost every single day. For life. How long does it take, like for somebody who's running a business, if I had you know, four, of these, four of these bikes, how long does it take to charge a battery? From empty to full will take you on a normal charge six up to eight hours. Yep. If it's on your top up, like if you've been to work and back and you've ridden the bike for an hour, half, uh, half an hour to work, half, or, half an hour back home, and if you get home and plug it into your socket, like a power socket, only take you two hours or less to top up the battery, which I recommend to do. Um, you can uh, run the battery from, uh, em from full to empty and recharge it, or you've got the option of just topping up. And if it's only top up, it only takes about two hours. Right. And now in Europe, at the petrol station, they've got a fast charge and it only takes half an hour. So um, it will be a while before those technologies been getting introduced to Australia, but we are always following Europe and uh, yeah, soon all the petrol stations will have a fast charge mode, which only take half an hour to recharge your battery mm. from empty to full, opposed to six to eight hours. Right. You can recharge just by using solar panels. Wow, so if you've considered that, be I, I, don't, so I don't know much about solar, uh, I know you, you need an inverter, but I would imagine there'd be some people out there that could easily figure out that maybe two solar panels and an inverter, uh, I mean a solar panel you could buy for 200 bucks, an inverter, 150. And there you go, you've got a vehicle that uh, virtually you can ride it for free. Yeah, and if you've got a business. You got a business. You get a rebate. Imagine the savings. And towards well, you the get rebate, a rebate, we actually... Uh, oh, the registration. I heard the other day that... Yeah, we've uh, approached the Minister of Transport and we've got a letter from the Minister's office saying that um, as from March this year, we, they already allocated a $100 rebate towards registration of an electrical vehicle. And by March, another two months away, they're going, they're going to issue another $150 rebate. So that's $250. So that's $250. Off your subsidy radar. from the government to register an electrical motor vehicle. That's nearly half the price of what so it costs. You save it. money on a service, you save money on a registration, and you save money on commuting, petrol savings. It's, this is why a, I'm It's a lot of money. I mean, to be, for so me to re register of my bikes, bike. I just wish that uh, yeah. a lot more people know about it because um, we all have to uh, gain from it. The well, environment. Just off that. The customer, because you virtually be commuting or travelling to university or commuting around the city or, go, or just by going for a simple joyride yeah, you're not, and cost you nothing. You're not doing any damage. And you're not polluting the, the environment. Mm. Look how much we can benefit. The environment, the consumer, the customer, all of us. It's mm. cheaper to purchase, cheaper to run and it doesn't pollute the air we breathe. Yep. It's just too good. It's just so smooth, there's no clutch, there's no noise, there's no smell, there's no stoppage at the petrol station, and it goes faster than the car. I don't think there's anything more I can add to this, because that's how big the spec sheet's going to be on this bike, and it all makes perfect sense to me. These sole rack bikes, you cannot go past these, you must come down, you must give Carlos a call and, or call me and, uh, and come and have a test ride of these. Come and see the quality, the build quality of these, but to come and ride them, you'll be amazed. I really, I, can't, I keep smiling because I, I can't believe I'm talking about these things with, with such a grin on my face. When I jumped on this thing here, literally wheel standard underneath me. It, it is just so much fun to ride, you know, and even with really good sticky, super sticky tyres, you, you're not going to come unstuck with this. You're going to save yourself a fortune. You're going to save yourself two hundred odd dollars in registration. I mean, the last time I registered, registered my bike, uh, it cost me five hundred and something dollars. I think my Ducati cost me six hundred. I can't remember. It was like five hundred eighty-six dollars or six hundred dollars. It was good, crazy. With with this, it's nearly half the price.
to register this as as opposed to a, a, another like a like a 150 or a 250 scooter. That's a that's a huge saving. No fuel, no fuel. Add it up. No fuel. Hmm. One more time. No fuel. That's it. That that's that's all I really have to say. No fuel. And and I think that I mean that sold me. I, I'm in, I'm a petrol head. Let's all consider this e-bike. Let's all get down here and and do the math. Just do the math. I think that that's important, especially for business guys. Do your math. Find out what it's costing you to run your bikes. One, two, three years into your business. Three years into the bike or the lease payments or if you just bought the thing. Work out how much it costs and then try and make it stack up against plugging a battery into a wall socket. The math will speak for itself and the cost. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm Stuart Biggins and uh, we'll be talking to you very soon about more exciting things with Soul Rack Bikes.